This video is sponsored by Serious Readers, the lighting company. I've been using their lights now for around six months and now use their lamps for all of my painting and hobby projects. So as well as the adjustable neck on this, you've also got uh, the head which can rotate around uh, like so. There's also a ball joint there uh, so you can adjust uh, the light to whichever way you want it to go. So with the lamp, uh, it's, it's adjustable beam. There's a dimmer uh, here so I can take the lighting down or I can turn it right up so that's fully Add it controllable. You can also adjust uh, the beam here by turning this and go for wider or narrower spread on the light beam. Then the light is a match to a true daylight using the LED daylight wavelength technology. So the great thing about this is whatever you're painting, it's, it's coming through as daylight. Uh, it's nice and crisp uh, and clear uh, for your painting and also finer detail. So recently I've been working on my Adeptus Mechanicus, rebasing and painting up new units of the army. Uh, but these lights are fantastic, just for getting that daylight technology. Uh, so a true reflection on the colours, uh, fantastic for painting finer detail. Uh, no strain on the eyes here, uh, that's the great thing about these lights. Uh, on top of that, you've got low heat coming off these because it is LED technology uh, and low energy use on them as well. So for all your hobby needs, you do need a decent lighting setup. Uh, so I'd recommend the Serious Readers lights. These lights are built here in the UK. Uh, they come with a 30 day free trial and also a five year warranty and that includes uh, the bulbs as well. So I'll put a link for these lamps in the video description below. And then when you make your purchase, use the code STRIKE7 uh, and that's for any of the lights, the classic light, the Alex light and the high definition light. Uh, and when you use that code, you'll receive a second lamp here. So it's this one here that you can see on the left hand side. Uh, so then you'll have the perfect setup for painting, just the, the cross beam of the two lamps uh, for all of your painting and hobby needs. So check out the link in the video description below. Uh, happy painting and enjoy the video. Right, welcome to another Battlefield Terrain tutorial. I've got another uh, setup here for your games of 40k. Uh, and the idea of this video is to take you through step by step to show you how to create uh, your own battlefields for your games of Warhammer 40,000. So as, as per usual in this series, I will uh, build this up. So we'll start with the foundation and then work our way through uh, the larger pieces of terrain, the finishing touches, so that you can achieve the exact same setup uh, that you see here. It's quite doable. Uh, I'm just going to show you all the, the different stages involved. As per usual, links will be in the video description below for the uh, variety of different products and things here. Uh, also, there'll be a number of tutorials that you can follow uh, for some of the items that you can see. So first up is the foundation. I'm using uh, a battle mat here. It's uh, Battleground version 2. It's from gamemat.eu. Uh, this one's actually 6x4 in size. Uh, and then I've used another mat here just to add put it down to the 60 inch across for regular games of 40k uh, but they do come uh, as a variety of sizes available you can get the 60 inch across size no problem at all uh, for the sort of the standard sizes now for the ninth edition games of 40k they also do uh, double-sided mats as well so you can get some great value out of these uh, so you can get two designs in one so battleground version 2 uh, it's called it's like a, a desert you kind of road running through the middle you can see there and then it's grass but also uh, rocks and cracks going on here as well. I'll zoom in and I'll take a closer look at the details. So this is the kind of colour palette that you're looking at here. There's battle mat and then it runs through uh, to the desert kind of finish that you can see in the middle. So the battle mat acts as your foundation. That gives you the kind of textures and colours that you're going to use. And so you want all the terrain to match nicely and the whole thing to look like it belongs together. Uh, that natural kind of effect. And then the other great thing about the battle mats is that they roll out nice and flat, which is great. Uh, if you roll them up properly and, and store them properly, they just sit nice and dead flat. They're soft, uh, figure friendly, so nice and quiet when you're rolling dice, not that clattering sound, uh, and figure friendly as well. So if models fall over, plastic ones or metal ones, whatever, uh, it's a softer impact for them, uh, just to help protect the two models. Not a bra not an abrasive material uh, at all. So for gaming, as a gaming surface, the battle mats are fantastic. So the next stage is the larger pieces of terrain. Uh, this is all one set. Uh, it's a rocky base set is the name of it. It's the uh, pre-painted resin terrain 
uh, from gamemat.eu. So that includes this larger platform here, this larger rocky sort of double layered outcrop here. There's two sort of missile silos, one and two. And then you also get this crater with a ruined uh, building on top of it. Now it actually comes so that the building is removable. So you can play it that way if you want to and then put the put the building somewhere else or not include it at all. Uh, but for this setup, I've, I've put it uh, where it belongs, it just sits there. The two go together, but you can split them up. So for this train set and, and the mat and the train set, I'm going to put the links to them in the video description. I, I have modified this. It didn't take very long at all. I just wanted to take the edge off the color scheme. It does come in like a brown sand color scheme, but I then painted it, sprayed it up to match in for another battle mat, a desert battle mat here. But looking at this mat and just the way that the colors going on with this one, this set seems to have blended in just perfect. So I'm actually being able to use this terrain set on two completely different battle mats, which is great. Just add variety for games of 40K. So that is good news if you could do that. If you're able to get terrain sets and mats to match in, uh, and crossover that's great it means you can go for different variety uh, which is fantastic so i'll put a link in for uh, the tutorial on how to adjust the terrain it's just done with sprays a few washes and that's pretty much it doesn't take very long at all uh, but just adds a bit more realism to the terrain uh, and in this case it means that it can match in with this battle map nicely so then you have your terrain uh, that's bulking out the table quite nicely it's creating some nice line of sight blocking uh, the terrain as well which is important for your games of 40k uh, this piece here with players obscuring so units can uh, hide behind that uh, but also wanted to add in a bit more obscuring terrain so what we've got here in these four corners is like a, a tall crop of trees bushes and foliage here so the first step is these palm trees i wonder if this one's a single one yet yeah, it is so i'll just take this out of here to show you so these are my homemade palm trees if you like the look of those there is already a full tutorial for these on the channel uh, how to make amazing palm trees uh, I'll again I'll link that for you they're great fun to make it's basically copper wire which you, I got off eBay all different sizes I run for it in the tutorial then I actually I, I wind it together to create the branches and then wind them together uh, here and when they're all binding together it makes the, the trunk of the tree uh, there's a couple of washers there and some green stuff to make the base, a nice weighty base for it, so it sits quite sturdily on the table. Uh, and then uh, the leaves are actually made of paper, just regular office paper. And then the trunk of the tree is the wire twisted around, you can perhaps see it a little bit, uh, and then uh, wrapped around with regular masking tape and then painted over the top. So a real sort of arty, crafty kind of project that you can do. Uh, but it seems to have worked nicely and you can create you can create them at different sizes. I'm, I've gone for a nice sort of glorious kind of size here. Uh, palm trees are very, very tall. If you look them up, photographs of them, uh, they are very big. So I'm going to tuck that back in there. There's obviously lots of stuff going on here to build this up. We'll just push that all back in. So that's the palm trees. Tutorial for them I'd already on the channel. You can check that out. I had a great project. I just did one big batch. Uh, here about 20 30 trees and you can use that for all sorts of scenarios and setups great for desert boards uh, and regular palm trees you can use for your historic games age of sigma and so on so a project that really is uh, worthwhile doing so next up just the palm trees by themselves is nothing to really bulk it out so just to make this real sort of uh, just bushy outcrop here so these are all broken down into pieces like so this was actually a foliage jungle terrain foliage set the Games Workshop produced years ago. I don't think it's available from them anymore. Uh, the best place to go for these uh, kind of uh, artificial plastic foliage would be places like aquarium shops. Uh, also looking for a, a fake aquarium plants, do that search on eBay. You'll find a whole host of stuff. Sometimes it's better if you can to physically have a look at the stuff. Uh, it's better than pictures, you know what you're getting, you can physically pick it up. Uh, to see the scale and the size of it before you purchase it if possible as long as you're sitting sort of cheap at uh, budget shops uh, where they'll have like a fake plant section you can keep a look out there i've got these from all different places these are from games workshop these i got in australia when i was on holiday uh, there's others that i've got from aquarium shops others that i have bought from ebay as long as you're just out and about and you see them uh, and then you're able to uh, get hold of them add them to collection but variety is what you want different types of plants and so on and because i've mounted them up here on just metal bases 
as, and glued them on. I, I can move these around, I can make a big cluster of foliage or a smaller amount. I could tuck like single ones in just around buildings just to add a little bit of effect. So uh, that's another project that you can do. Easily done. Once you've got your foliage, you can use it for all sorts of terrain setups. So very easy to do. Uh, it's aquarium shops, uh, or searching for the equivalent of that on places like eBay, Etsy and so on. Uh, you'll be able to find uh, the plastic foliage, aquarium plants, foliage and so on. You should be able to track that down, no problem at all. And the cost uh, isn't really too high. So then to further blend that all in, I've got myself a uh, lichen, massive fan of this stuff. You can buy it in all different uh, shades uh, here. So this is kind of a, like a sandy, browny, green kind of color. It's not too gaudy uh, looking. So it fits in quite nicely with this ball and also the jungle terrain, but you can get all different shades. And again, I usually get my lichen just off of eBay. So you can get a hold of that nice big bag of it. Uh, and if you track it down well, you can get a pretty good bargain. And again, not pay too much for the bag of lichen. I've been using it for this bag here. It's probably had it for about 10 years and using it for all different types of terrain and setups. So you're pushing that in, it just, just bulks the whole thing out quite nicely. And, and then finally to finish off is these random stones. So I got these on the beach. They're actually a lot more sort of terracotta kind of red color. What I've done is when I was spraying this project up, the colors that I used to spray this, I took a tray of the stones and, and then actually sprayed them up with the exact same colors. So you'll see the stones and the terrain an exact match because I've used the same spray on those and thankfully if you look here the color of this terrain and bald or the battle map matches in just nice so we've got the terrain matching up nicely stones the lich and, and the battle map itself uh, all blended together and when you do that you're able to get the effect here of everything just matching in just nicely so with that you've now got uh, some great areas of interest you've, you've got your main sort of structure to your table which is your terrain you also got your natural looking out crops of, of trees and bushes and so on. There's sort of a smaller version across there, uh, but again, the same process being used. Other than that, on the board is some uh, accessories, barricades, games workshop barrels across there, some more ammunition crates and so on. Place them on top of the buildings just to blend it all in. When you're able to use some official games workshop stuff such as these, it just makes it more sort of authentic 40k. The final thing really to talk about is the Munitorum armed containers so from Games Workshop here. So there's ones painted up with the Ultramarines, there's Blood Angels ones just there. And uh, these four stacked up, they're great for sort of line of sight blocking. Uh, those are for uh, Cadian's Astra Militarum. Again, there is a full tutorial for Munitorum armed containers on the channel. So the exact results that you see with all the detail, uh, that will be in that video showing you how to paint those up again. Quite straightforward to do. Once you've got your Munitorum armoured containers, you can use them on all different terrain setups, not just this one here, but the, you know you can use them across a whole variety of terrain setups. And once you've got them, they're a great resource to have uh, for setting up games of 40k. So that pretty much is the tutorial, really just sort of outsourcing you here to a number of different tutorials that have already been done. So the resources are there. You can pick and choose any element of this board that you like, uh, or indeed encourage us to copy the entire setup that you see here basic elements of that then is your battle mat. Uh, the, the one terrain set from gamemat.eu has filled this table out quite nicely. Uh, and then the trees uh, here so you can make them yourself. Good fun projects to encourage us to do one big batch and then have those as a resource uh, for your games. And then just the accessories on top. So your Unitron armored containers and other battlefield accessories as well. But all the links will be in the video description below. But the idea of this series is to help you, give you ideas uh, give you a bit of guidance on setting up your own games of 40k. It's great to have armies painted up, but you need a good backdrop, and really a table can add a brilliant atmosphere to a game and really set up a nice theme for a battle. So that's the video. As per usual, I will close out here with some panning shots and music to give you the flavour of this battlefield. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time.